Janome. Hi, I'm Joanna Marsh of Custom Quilts and I'm a maker for Janome. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to quilt a quilt block from the Janome Rainbow Block of the Month using the Janome Quilt Maker Pro 20 long arm. So a few of the supplies that you'll need today are your ruler base, which I've already attached to my Quilt Maker Pro 20, and a couple of your favorite long arm quilting rulers. Make sure that you grab long arm quilting rulers because if you just grab, um, you know, an acrylic quilting ruler that's only one eighth of an inch thick, that's not gonna be appropriate for what we need. And sometimes uh, your hopping foot can hop over that, break the ruler, break the needle, do all kinds of bad things. So just make sure that you grab a couple of rulers or one ruler, long arm quilting ruler that's appropriate for long arm quilting. We're gonna do a little bit of basic ruler work and combine that with free motion quilting to create a really popping, impactful quilt block. So let's get started. Okay, so our first block that we're going to be working on is this fantastic maple leaf. And I've done it in a solid color. I've pieced it in a solid color, so it's really nice and modern looking. There, uh, the background is this great low volume gray fabric that I picked. And I went ahead and I basted this entire quilt on the Janome Quilt Maker Pro 20 so that I could take it off and just do a couple of quilt blocks at a time if I wanted to. You don't have to do that. You can quilt the entire thing if you want to, um, but I'm gonna be doing this kind of in chunks. And so I'm gonna go ahead and remove my basting stitches. And I'm just gonna tie these off because I, I only wanna be working with this one block right now. So very quickly, I'm going to do this and then we'll get started with the quilting. Okay, so now we've got our block ready to go. It's ready to be quilted. And today I'm gonna to be working with this Janome Ditch long arm ruler. This is great for quilting in the ditch and also for doing offset, maybe like a quarter of an inch quilting. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start my quilting with the quilting plan that I have come up with for this block is I'm going to come in here and I'm gonna trace around the block first. Then I'll come in and I'll do uh, an offset quilting line that's a quarter of an inch out from the outlining seams. And then I'm going to do some cool free motion quilting on the inside of this block. And then I'll come back in and fill in with free motion quilting in the background as well. I'm also going to stitch a line here and here um, around the outer edges of the block because later I'm going to be coming in and filling in the quilting on the sashing. Okay, so let's get started. I'm going to start by outlining the block. And so I'm gonna be stitching in the ditch on the sashing. So I'm just taking a few stitches in place. I have my ruler base attached already. And now I'm going to stitch around the perimeter of this block. I've already removed my basting stitches. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to come around and I'm gonna stitch around the perimeter of my maple leaf, okay? So I'm using my ruler and I'm being a little bit cautious of where my needle's going. I'm trying to go right in the middle of those two pieces of fabric. And so this can be a little bit easier depending on how you piece your quilt. So whenever I piece this, I press my seams open just because I like nice flat seams. It's a little bit easier to stitch in the ditch if you press both pieces of fabric to one side or the other, whether it's the dark side, the light side, whatever you wanna do. Um, okay, so I've already stitched on that. I'm stitching on top of a previous line of stitching. And I'm gonna go ahead and quilt all the way around this little stem part. Okay, 
Okay, nice and easy. Like so. Okay, then now I'm gonna go ahead and proceed closing around my leaf. And again, I've already stitched in this ditch on the sashing. So I'm just gonna be stitching on top of a previous line of stitching. Now this does take a little bit longer than the rest of the quilting because I'm trying to be so careful that my stitching falls in that ditch. It takes a little bit of practice and it's not the end of the world if your stitching isn't completely in the ditch, but it looks really nice when you get it right. So I'm just using my the edge of my ruler as a guide for my foot. I'm just about done here stitching on the perimeter of this. Perfect, there we go. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I wanna quilt. I'm stitching on top of a previous line of stitching again. And I wanna come down here and I want my starting point for this stitching. I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch offset from my block and I'm going to backtrack just a little bit and do another quarter of an inch. Okay, I'm going to come up here and do the same thing. Okay, awesome. So now we're done with our perimeter quilting and now I'm ready to add my free motion quilting. So I'm gonna be doing little swirls on the inside of this block. So nice and easy, I'm just doing these circular motions in and out. And I'm using this nice gray thread. So it, it's not too highly contrasting, but I'm not using a matching thread color on the fabric. I do want it to stand out just a little bit. This is one of my favorite motifs to quilt. It's very calming, kind of a meditative, in and out, just doing that circular motion. And whenever I go in, I'm making a, a rounded inside of my swirl. I'm not doing a sharp point, although you definitely could if you like the look of kind of a hooked inside to your swirl. I'm gonna go ahead and echo that one more time. So all I'm doing is I'm just filling up this little leaf with these swirls. And you could definitely do something that's more, you know, leaf-like. You could quilt some veins on the leaf and a midrib and things like that so that it looks a little bit more realistic. But I just really love these swirls, so that's what I'm going for here. And so I'm kind of nesting these swirls and overlapping them a little bit so that we fill this space neatly. Sometimes whenever you have areas that are really small, like right in here, sometimes it's easier to just echo those rather than starting a brand new swirl. And then you give yourself a little bit more space to create the next one and so that it has a little more fullness. That way you're not trying to cram one of these swirls into this teeny tiny space. Like right here, I decided to just go ahead and echo that one. And you know, I probably could have fit another swirl in there, but it's just easier to echo whenever you have like an awkward space to fill. So I'm working my way up to kind of the point of this leaf. And I need to be careful about where I'm going because I don't want to pull myself into a corner. So I'm coming back down. That down here and I'm just kind of being cognizant of the path of my quilting so like right now I know that okay I finished all of this now I need to be back over here and finish up this quilting in this area so I need to retrace some of my lines so that I can get back over here so don't panic if you if you kind of quilt yourself into a corner you can always retrace your lines 
just it's helpful if you slow down a little bit so that you can get there. So I'm going pretty slow, making sure that I'm right on top of my previous quilting lines. Perfect, there we go. Now I'm off to the races. Awesome. Okay, so we are done filling this little leaf up with those adorable little swirls. Now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to be quilting some what I like to call smoky swirls in the background of my quilting, okay, in the background of this block. So let's go ahead and do that. And so what I do is I do kind of a partial S shape and then I bring it in and do a pointed center, pull it back out, and then I echo it. Super simple. And I just repeat that movement over and over again. I'm gonna bump my stitches per inch up to 13. So this is a really fun motif to do. I like this because it kind of takes on the appearance of wind or water or some other natural element. And they're really fast and fun to quilt. Follow that line back down. And again, this is one that lends itself really well to echoing. So if you get yourself in a bind and you're in kind of an awkward position, you can always echo this bad boy out a couple more times to fill the space. Okay, now I'm going to follow this line up. Echo once more right there. And you can quilt this really tense, you can quilt it loosely. It's a really fun one to do. So hopefully this will make a little bit of sense as to why I quilted this quarter inch kind of breathing line right here. I like to separate my free motion motifs. So I've got two pretty busy free motion fillers that I'm using. And I don't like those to butt right up against each other. So that's why I quilted that line of ruler work so that those could kind of have some breathing room and some uh, area of separation. And you don't have to do that. If you like both of them to butt up against each other, that's totally fine. It's just personal preference and uh, what your quilting style is. So whatever you like to do, however you like your quilting to look, that's the right answer. space to fill. We're just about done with this block. I'm going to follow this diagonal line up with my ruler again. Squeeze a little cute swirl in here. And that is it. Okay, so uh, now that I am, I'm gonna quilt this block kind of in chunks, or this quilt I mean. So I'm going to take a couple of stitches and I'm gonna cut my bobbin thread and my top thread so that I've got quite a bit of excess in case I wanna come back and bury those threads later. There we go. All right, and now we have our block quilted. Oh my gosh, doesn't that look so good? Love it.